So hi, welcome to the session called Bywire Integration and Control for Autonomous and ADAS Research Vehicles. My name is David Agnew. I'm head of new business development for DataSpeed Inc. So today we're going to be talking about Bywire control of vehicles for developers in the R&D space for autonomous vehicles and active safety. So first of all, what does it really mean? It's what are we really talking about? It's the acceleration, the braking, the steering, and the shifting control of the vehicle. Being able to control those electronically is necessary to do development of autonomous vehicles. Second is why is this needed? Why are we even talking about it? The key is most R&D for autonomous vehicles is done at the functional level. What's being developed is the, the software for the autonomous driving not the by-wire system, but the by-wire system is needed to allow that development to take place. So there always comes a point at the beginning of the development project where the question is asked, okay, do you do this yourself? Do you convert the vehicle yourself? Or do you look for a system that's already available and just go out and purchase it? So what I really want to do with this is give enough information to help assess those considerations to make that decision whether or not to build or to buy uh, a by wire system for the platform that you're going to be developing. So the approach I'm going to be taking is to break this down into seven main considerations, seven elements to assess against your uh, the capabilities that you have, the budget, the resources, and, uh, and the risk um, for the project. So let's dive in. Starting out with number one, the first of the seven elements is the actuators. What's really behind and really makes up a bi-wire system is the actuation. So robotics is really converting something from uh, electrical signals to mechanical motion signals. That takes actuators, electric motors, um, electric cylinders. So what we're looking at doing that for is that the steering, the acceleration, the braking, and the shifting. So steering first, that one can be done in one of two ways. And we're, we're talking about doing this on passenger type vehicles. You can either add an external motor to the steering and a controller to allow electrical signals to control the steering, or you can utilize the power steering that's already built into the vehicle. Many vehicles now have this, so this is actually a very good option but there's still some difficulties there and considerations with regard to how do you communicate with that motor and also the safety aspects to it. The, the power steering motor on a vehicle has the capability to actually overpower human input. So that has to be taken in consideration so that you don't send a bad signal causing the vehicle to do something you don't want it to do. Acceleration, next part of it is really straightforward. Almost all vehicles now have an acceleration sensor um, a pedal sensor on the accelerator, and that gets sent to the engine controller and controls the acceleration of the engine. Braking, like the steering, has different options that you can take. Um, you can, again, just put a motor, a, an outside device on the pedal or somewhere on the braking apply system. But again, what's better is to utilize the motors or the electric braking that's already built into the vehicle if it hasn't. So, Two options there typically. All vehicles now in the US have electronic stability control. This can be utilized for applying brakes um, on request. Um, but the, the drawback there is stability control is not sized for stopping the entire vehicle. It's sized for stopping or controlling one or two wheels at a time. So the trade-off there is you get a little bit lower response time for applying the brakes and a little bit of noise because it's, a, it's not a a continuous running system. Second option with the, the built-in braking, which is really the best option, is to start with a vehicle that has a brake-by-wire system built into it. Brake-by-wire production system that I'm talking about is typically found on hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles. These have full response time, um, equal to the capabilities of a human emergency brake stop, and they also run very quietly and smoothly. Shifting, the last one, again, can be add-on or can utilize, again, that's just starting to merge is shift by wire options on some vehicles. So in summary, it's really desirable for the actuation element to utilize what's already 
in the vehicle because then you're taking advantage of any safety measures that are built in on those devices and you're taking advantage of the reliability that's been designed into those devices. So consideration number two is the communication architecture of the vehicle. So if you're utilizing these actuators that are built into the vehicle, how do you communicate with them? How do you send the signals? How do you control them? How do you not disrupt uh, systems that they're already communicating with, operating on, and cause faults? So to utilize these actuators, you really have to get into the communications architecture, the protocols of the vehicle. You need an understanding of the computer area network, the CAN, the CAN systems. There's often multiple CANs communicating with different devices on the vehicles. Um, you need to have an understanding of the embedded ADAS or active safety systems on the vehicle so that you're not deactivating any of those as you're interrupting and changing command levels. Production command protocols and logic are needed to understand and address on operational systems to keep the operational systems functional and to avoid any faults. Communication can be one of the biggest hurdles as it takes knowledge that is often available only through the original OEM or the tier one supplier who created that particular subsystem. So knowledge of the system is needed and a lot of times there's research, there's relationships that have to be put in place before you can do this. Element number three, electronic hardware. So the controllers, the electronics needed for the communications, for the processing of the low level controls and the safety monitoring and the overrides that are built into the system. More on those a little bit later. Um, if doing this in house, you'd be selecting uh, off the shelf type products or maybe even designing your own products for doing this. You have to take into account functional performance, having enough processing power, reliability, um, and a key thing on this level is the safety. If you're going to be using on public roads especially, um, the, the safety plan, the safety measures that need to be put in place often are driven down to the controller level. So you need to, be, need to have the ability to see if those are within the electronics or to put those in. For data speed by wire kits, we've designed all the electronics in-house develop those with our own capabilities specifically for the use of this by wire vehicle conversion. Consideration number four, software. Very big one um, for creating the by wire conversion, software is needed to be developed in a couple of different key areas. Communication interfaces, low level uh, motion controls, and also the safety measure setting. So low level controls, what's needed there is speed control methods maintaining a speed without too much oscillation, and also steering or yaw control methods. How you're controlling the, the yaw, either through angle or for torque on the steering, comes into play there. Safety measures also need to be, be developed within the software of the by-wire system. In fact, this is where most of the safety elements exist for this type of a system. So as this is a new product, we're taking a production vehicle and we're adding by wire interface to it, that new product has to have potentially new safety measures. Driver override settings for the wheels and the pedals, control signal limits, and vehicle speed dependencies, just to name a few. Those reside in software somewhere on the system. Fifth element then is power. So we're adding a lot of additional hardware electronics to the vehicle. So power considerations need to come into play. Power for the base by wire system that we're converting the vehicle on, but also power for the autonomous or the active safety system that's gonna be developed on top of this. It's often very advantageous to put those two systems together rather than be separately designing two power systems. So considerations on the power distribution includes having multiple channels that have independence from one another, performance of the actual regulated signals coming out for the sensors, for the different controllers, smart fusing of the different channels, the different circuits, and sequencing the control of activation of different channels, such as for powering up, shutting down sequences. Item number six for consideration is the reliability. Often overlooked, um, this is from past experience and working with other customers. Uh, the reliability of a base system like this for an R&D project 
is very key. And it's critical to the success of you know, any autonomous or active safety development project. And the key thing is, is it going to work every day that you're doing your development once you have this built. When it doesn't work, how hard is it going to be to repair it? Do you have the expertise to do that diagnosis and the repair? Are there resources available for doing the repair? The cost and downtime can add up rapidly for, aid, for autonomous and ADAS development. And a vehicle can be the primary development platform. When the vehicle is the primary development platform, it shuts down all progress until it's fixed. So we saved the most important item for last because it needs the context of the previous ones, and that's safety. So what is the safety concern for doing a bi-wire conversion on a vehicle? Well, the key thing is we have a new engineering device that we've created and we're gonna put out there for use. And it has hazards. Any new device you wanna look at if it has potential hazards. So an example of a hazard for this type of a new device is unwanted steering while moving at 80 miles per hour on a highway. There are several classes of these types of hazards that come out of the drive-by-wire and the autonomous development platforms. So how do you address these? It's really four basic steps. There's a lot of different processes, a lot of different guidelines on how to do these, but you can break it down quickly to, to four basic steps, which start with identifying your hazard, your hazards, um, which means doing a hazard analysis, asking yourself what harmful events could happen or be caused by this new device, doing a safety analysis to see how those hazards could be caused by this design and how often or what is the likelihood that they be caused, adding safety measures to mitigate these risks and to lower the chance of them happening to an acceptable level, and then verifying that those safety measures work as intended. Those are basic steps that have to be done to really, to really put a, a safety critical product out for use by people. So continuing with the safety, the level of safety that goes into the design, how much care it takes, is driven by the operational domain. Um, and this is the operational domain of the R&D project that you have underway. What speeds are you gonna be operating on? What type of test facilities are you gonna be using? Are you testing on the roadway, on test tracks? And this part of converting a vehicle is critical, but again, can often be overlooked. And what's really a play here is you're protecting for rare events. And rare events can often be accepted as a very low risk because they've not been seen in a long time or they maybe have never been seen by whoever's working on the project. So one thing to share here, just from personal experience, the automotive industry has had experience in this area, so there really is standards in place for doing development projects, testing on the road, and they are fairly standard approaches between tier ones and OEMs. Um, and from experience, I can say um, with 30 years in the industry, I have seen fatalities in test track operations, um, and we've all seen a fatality with autonomous development on the roadway now, there's been enough of these incidents that the reality of the hazards in the aftermath is visible, so they should be addressed and they should be mitigated where we can. So here's the reality. The primary safety measures in a bi-wire system for AV testing on the roadway is the safety driver in combination with the bi-wire system. It's not really the AV system. It's that fallback system that's being relied on. So the safety that's built into the bi-wire is very critical. So at data speed, our leadership team comes from decades of experience in the automotive field at both OEMs and at tier ones, working on advanced active safety, autonomous development, autonomous chassis controls, Formula One racing technology, and we've utilized this experience as well as third-party expert support in safety to influence the safety approach that we put into our bywire kits. So we have hundreds of customers operating in the US, China, and Europe for several years. And we have customers who have received safety approval for road testing from their internal safety checks as well as external safety checks. So from a safety standpoint, we're very proud of our record and very proud of the design that we have put together for the bywire system. So in conclusion, 
I went through the seven items that are really key for consideration in doing a by wire kit. The actuation, communications, the electronics, the software, the power, the reliability, and in the end, the most important, the safety. At Data Speed, we've created a solution with these items built in and proven in the field. They're used by OEMs, tier ones, tech companies, startups, and researchers. They met safety criteria from California to NHTSA's federal guidelines to even obtaining road use permits from European certification houses. And we've received this uh, with, through a couple of customers on multiple platforms. The value proposition of utilizing a data speed by wire kit is really the reduction of the overall cost that it takes, reduction in time. And in time we're talking about instead of taking months, it only takes days or a week. Also, uh, the value is the reliability, the built-in safety, and overall reduction in the risk to the project. So with that, thanks for listening. Again, my name is David Agnew with Dataspeed, and check us out at dataspeedinc.com. Thanks.